All right, welcome back. We are going to start with this example where Jeff wants to accumulate $5,000 in order to make a payment in three years. If he makes a deposit into an account today, earning 10% effective annual interest, how much should his deposit be? So this is a question where it is asking us, how much should you deposit in an account today? So that is a huge indicator that we are looking at present value and not a future value, because future value is all about accumulation and values in the future, and present value is all about values today. So let's start by making a note of everything we know in this problem. We know that the future value, or the amount that Jeff wants to accumulate to, is 5,000. So we would say that the amount in the future that he's interested in, or P of T, the present value at a time in the future, is equal to $5,000. We also know that he wants to accumulate this $5,000 in just three years. So we're going to say that T is equal to three in years. And then finally, we know that he is earning 10% effective annual interest, which means that it is a compound interest rate of 10%. So that means that his interest rate is 0.1 compounded yearly. So now we just have to calculate his present value. So let's pull out our present value formula. We will have that the present value at time zero is equal to the present value in the future at a time t times our present value factor. So now let's start plugging things in. We are going to have that this is equal to 5,000 times v to the third power, because that's the amount of time we are interested in, three years. And then we can write this again as 5,000 times one over one plus the interest rate, which is 0.1 to the third power. And this is what our present value factor is equal to in this case. Now we can simplify this to be 1.1, because one plus 0.1 will be 1.1. And then if we were to plug this into our calculator, this 5,000 times one divided by 1.1 cubed, this would be equal to $3,756 and 57 cents. And so what this value means is that if we deposited this amount today, or if Jeff made this deposit today, he would have $5,000 in three years given this particular compound interest rate. Let's look at another example. So in this example, we have Lily will receive $3,000 at the end of each year for the next five years. With an annual effective interest rate of 8%, find today's present value of all the payments Lily will receive. Now this problem just straight up tells us we're looking for the present value, so hopefully you know we're looking for a present value and not a future value. Hopefully that is very obvious here. So in this problem, we are looking at multiple payments of the same value. In fact, we're looking at 3,000 being paid to Lily at the end of each year for five years. So she's going to get a total of five payments over five years. So since we're working with multiple payments, let's draw a timeline. Okay, so I drew our timeline here. We have a timeline that is going to start at time equals zero, and then our next mark would be time equals one, or one year in the future, and then time equals two, time equals three, time equals four, all the way up to time equals five, or five years in the future. And we wanna know her present value, Lily's present value, or the deposit she will make at the present day being time equals zero. And then in each year, she's going to receive $3,000. So then in each one of these tick marks, she would be getting $3,000. So I'm gonna write that in here for each one. And so let's set up our equation here. First of all, we know that the present value is going to be equal to a certain amount in the future times that present value factor. And since we have multiple payments or multiple amounts that we want to have in the future, we are going to have several values and present value factors that we are going to be adding together. So let's take a look here. We will have that the present value is equal to $3,000 which is going to be our value in the future at time equals one times the present value factor for one year. So to the power of one. And then we're going to add this to another 3000. This is going to cover the 3000 in year two times the present value factor for two years, right? Because we're looking at a value that is two years in the future and we wanna bring it back to the present. And then we will add this to another $3,000. And this $3,000 is in the future at time equals three. So we need to bring it back by multiplying it by this accumulation factor to the third power. And then we will do the same for years four and five. We'll have 3,000 times V to the fourth plus three 
thousand times v to the fifth. And just one more time to explain what's going on here in case it's not quite making sense is that for each one of these payments, again, she is receiving $3,000 at the end of each year, not 3,000 total, 3,000 more every year. And because of that, we need to take each one of those $3,000 into account for this five year period. And so if we are located on the timeline at time equals zero, we need to look at how far in the future each one of these payments are, and that's going to be the value of time for our present value factor. This factor is going to bring it back in time to the present to tell us how much we need to deposit now. So we're bringing this $3,000 back one year, this $3,000 back two years, and this one three, and so on with four and five. And so this is really all there is to this setup. The only thing we haven't made a note of yet is the interest rate, which we can see is an annual effective interest rate of 8%, which would be a compounded rate. So we could write that her interest rate is equal to 8% or 0.08. So then if we were to solve this, to make it easier on ourselves, right, when we plug this in the calculator, we don't want to plug 3,000 in five times, right? That would be a little annoying. What we can do instead is we can pull out that common factor of 3,000 and have it multiplied by V plus V squared plus V cubed plus V to the fourth plus V to the fifth. And so then we can simplify this and we'll have that the present value is equal to 3,000 times, and then we're gonna go through and write out each one of these present value factors. So we'll start with the one to the first power, and we're gonna have one over one plus the interest rate, which in this case is 0 0.08. So we'll have one plus 0 0.08, which is 1.08, and that would be to the first power. So I'm not going to write the exponent in that case. And then we'd have plus one over 1.08 squared, and that would be this present value factor. And then we'd go through each of these, just taking the denominator here, 1.08, to each of the different powers. We'd have to the third power, fourth power, and then the fifth power. So I'll write one more here, but since I'm running out of space here, I'm not gonna write all of these present value factors. I'm gonna stop here, and then we can continue on with the calculation. And so if we were to go through that and then plug it into our calculator, we would find that the present value in this scenario would be $11,978.13. That is a lot of money that Lily would have to deposit today in order to have these $3,000 payments for each year for the next five years. So let's move on to our final example. So here's our final example. It is also going to be our most complex example. So hopefully you are able to follow this as I go through it. I'm gonna to try to make it very clear what's going on here, but let's just read through it. Charlie and Carly want to set up a trust fund for their three children, ages two, four, and five. They want the fund to pay $20,000 to each child when they are 18 and pay $75,000 to each child when they are 21. If the trust fund earns 9% annual effective interest, how much should Charlie and Carly invest today? So first thing first, let's just take care of what we know that is easy to take care of, right? Let's take care of the fact that we know that the trust fund is earning 9% annual effective interest. So let's just write down that our interest rate is equal to 0 0.09, which is going to be our compound interest rate in this case. That is what the effective annual interest rate means. It is a compounded annual rate. And now let's build a timeline because just like the previous example, there are multiple payments happening here. So I'm going to draw a timeline. All right, so I have the basic structure of our timeline built where this is going to be time equals zero or the present value. And this is going to be the end of our timeline. Now, how far in the future is this going to be? Well, in order to know that, we have to know when our final payment is going to be made. And our final payment is going to be made when the final child turns 21, right? They're getting paid money when each child turns 18, and they're getting paid when each child turns 21. So when the final child turns 21, that's going to be the final payment. So how many years are in between there? Well, let's keep track of how old each child is in each year. So in the beginning, at time equals zero, or today, the child's ages are two, four and five, right? And we wanna know when the youngest child turns 21. Well, in this case, that's gonna be 19 years from now, right? Two plus 19 is 21. So in 19 years, the youngest child will be 21. And that's gonna be the time of our final payment. So we can say that time in this case 
is going to be equal to 19 at the end of our timeline. Now, I'm not gonna go through here and create 19 tick marks because we're actually not interested in every single year here, right? There's going to be a pretty large gap where nothing's happening because these children are pretty young. They're ages two, four, and five, and this account isn't going to be paying anything until one of them turns 18. So we're not gonna be interested in any specific year until one of the children turns 18 years old. So that's going to happen the soonest when the child who is five years old turns 18. And so that would be in 13 years since five plus 13 would be 18. So we're gonna have a little bit of a break here in our timeline. So I'll mark one year here. We'll have time equals one right here, but then I'm going to break this up. I'm going to do one of these here where we just kind of break it up. And then our next tick mark is going to be time equals 13. And so now how old is each child going to be in this year? Well, the youngest child, two plus 13, so they will be 15. The next child who is four years old will be 17, right? 13 plus four. And the child who is five, we said, is going to be 18. And that is when our first payment is going to occur. At this time, they are going to get $20,000. So now let's mark the rest of the years on our timeline from time equals 13 to time equals 19, and then we will continue on with keeping track of when these payments are coming in. All right, so now let's label each one. We'll have time equals 14 here. Then we'll have 15, 16, 17, and 18. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through and write down how old each child will be at each one of these years by just adding one to each one of these within each year. So hopefully you can do this along with me because this is gonna make it easier to figure out when the payments are coming in. Okay, so I wrote down all the different ages that these children will be in each year in the future. And hopefully you came up with the same numbers. And so now what we wanna look for is every time one of these children turns either 18 or 21. So I'm gonna circle these. We're gonna be looking for when they turn 18 and 21. So we already found when the first child turned 18. So now let's look for the next one. I see that in year 14, another child turns 18. So they're going to get another $20,000 there. Now I'm gonna have to write a little smaller here because this 20,000 is pretty big and we're gonna have to write a lot here. So I'll write 20K. They're gonna get 20,000 there. So then they're also gonna get 20,000 in year 14 because one of their children turned 18 years old. So now let's look at year 15. None of them turn 18 and none of them turn 21, so there's gonna be no payments in that year. Then we go to year 16 and ooh, we have a child turning 18 years, so they are going to get 20,000. And then we also have a child that is turning 21, and so they're going to get a payment of 75,000, right? Because they get paid 75 when they turn 21, but 20,000 when they turn 18. So then we'll also have 75K. So let's go to year 17, where we have another child turning 21. So they're going to get another 75K. Then we look at year 18, nobody is turning 21. And then we go to year 19, where the final child turns 21. And we have that final payment of 75K. So there we go. That was a lot of work to figure out when all of these payments are coming in. But this is going to be very helpful to setting up our present value equation. So in total, we have six different payments. We have three payments of 20,000 and we have three payments of 75,000. So if we wanna find our present value, right, our present value would be at time equals zero, then we're going to want to account for each of these payments. So let's write present value equals, and let's start with our first payment of $20,000. So we're gonna have 20,000, and we're gonna be bringing this back to the present, right? We are here in year 13 with this payment, but we wanna know how much to deposit today, so we need to bring this back to year zero. So we're gonna be multiplying by the present value factor to the amount of years that this is in the future, which is 13. Then we'll worry about our next payment. So we'll add plus, and we're gonna have another 20K in year 14, so we'll have 20,000. And this payment is 14 years in the future. So then we're gonna multiply by our present value factor to the 14th power. And then let's look at our next payment, which is going to be 20,000 in year 16. So we'll have plus 20,000 times V to the 16th power, but then we also have another payment of 75K in year 16. So we'll have plus 75,000 times V to the 16th power. And then we have two more payments of 75,000 to account for, one in year 17 and one in year 19. And so we can add those accordingly. 75,000 
times v to the 17th power plus 75,000 times v to the 19th power. And that is the setup of our equation. We did all of this setup just so we could find this equation right here. Now we're gonna be able to simplify this a little bit, but I'm also going to need a little more space. So I'm just going to rearrange some things and make some things smaller so that we have some room to work. All right, so I made our timeline smaller. Hopefully you can still see it, although I don't know if we're going to need to reference it anymore, but I just still wanted to have it here so we could see it if we need to. And let's simplify this a little bit. We see that we have a common factor of 20,000 that we can pull out of the first three terms here, and we have a common factor of 75,000 that we can pull out of these terms. So we'll have that this is equal to 20,000 times v to the 13th plus v to the 14th plus v to the 16th plus 75,000 times v to the 16th plus v to the 17th plus v to the 19th. And then finally, this would be equal to 20,000 times one over one plus the interest rate, which we said is 9%, 1.09 to the 13th power plus one over 1.09 to the 14th power. And you can see where this is going pretty quickly here. It's gonna be a little tedious, but we'll have one over 1.09 to the 16th power. And then we would do the same thing for this 75,000. We'll have one over 1.09 to the 16th plus one over 1.09 to the 17th plus one over 1.09 to the 19th. And that is all the work that we hopefully need to do ourselves so that we know what to plug in to our calculator. And if we were to plug this into our calculator and not making any mistakes, we would find that our present value would be equal to $68,353.34. So this would be the answer or our present value to this problem. So that was a lot of work, but it really wasn't too difficult of a problem. The hardest part was figuring out what year all these payments were coming in. So I hope drawing it out like this helped you figure out where those payments were taking place and also helped you to set up this equation and then the following simplifications until our eventual calculation of our present value. So that was the final example for this example video. If you have any questions, please feel free to put those in the comments and I will get around to answering those. But if you don't have any questions, that's all I have for now. So I will see you next time.